Welcome into Pro Football Today. It's time for the post-game show with Casey Hudson and Tom Vecchio here on Sports Grid TV. And uh, while there may have been some stalemate moments in that matchup between the Broncos and the Saints, there definitely were <clears throat> moments that were quite... Uh, I want to say jaw-dropping, but I don't mean it as dramatic as exciting jaw-dropping, just more jaw-dropping in the sense of, like, did that really just happen? Uh, the Saints finally found the end zone as the clock was winding down in the fourth there. We thought the game was done. That was not the case. So the total or the score being 33 Broncos to 10 New Orleans Saints. So obviously everyone who had that 36 or 37, wherever you grab that number, that got pretty busted up there. Um, Broncos being able to walk away with 33 points, a uh, number of things for Tom and I to unpack here but I guess Tom your overall take of the game as that second half was one for I don't know more injuries unfortunately for the Saints and more points for the Denver Broncos right like you said the, the game was looking like a, a dead under the entire way and it you know kind of sneaks over right at the end there uh you know Rattler got banged up a little bit they bring in Jake Hayner uh I maybe he'll be starting in the next game for them like the same season is on the line over the next few games. Like it sucks to say at this point because they're dealing with so many injuries, but that's the reality of the situation. Broncos are over 500. They took care of business as we kind of explained during the pregame show. Like this game just had to be as simple and straightforward as possible. You were playing a team that is dealing with so many injuries, a rookie quarterback on a short week, missing their best offensive players. Broncos just get in there, take care of business, do your thing, fly home, get a little bit extra rest, and move forward above 500 in a spot to compete for the wild card. So we got a ton to break down. We got some games to preview coming up. Uh, I'm ready to go. Yeah, absolutely. And the Saints are definitely going to need that rest to have any chance at picking up a couple more W's before this NFL season wraps. But as Tom said, plenty to unpack between this Broncos Saints matchup. Once again, 33 to 10 Broncos on top. And then we'll preview the Sunday slate ahead. So don't go anywhere. Stick with Tom and myself here on Pro Football Today, the post game show on Sports Grid. Pro football today on Sports Grid. Odds in motion. Trying to see what lines have moved throughout the week. Never felt more comfortable in the set than I do for this year. I'm uh, ready. I'm just getting angry. The hot takes are going to be here all uh, long, people. What in the world is going on in Miami, Dom? It's not particularly anything to shy away from just because many people are on top of it. Hot take, hot take. I think this line is asking you once again to take the world. Pro football today, only on Sports Grid. I do a sliding DiVincenzo to the one. Uh, obviously, Terrence Shannon Jr., that is actually dynamic uh, offensively and defensively. So we'll see how it works. I think it's a little bit of a work in progress. Do both teams win? Yes. I don't think at the end of the day, Minnesota could have afforded to keep Cat, Rudy, and Ant for that amount of money. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid.
Welcome back into Pro Football Today, the post-game show with Casey Hudson and Tom Vecchio here on Sports Grid. And in case you missed it, in case you changed the channel, in case you were juggling baseball, hockey, and football on this Thursday night, Broncos come out on top 33-10 to versus the New Orleans Saints. Somewhat as expected, so all those Broncos money lines, congratulations. Then you got Bo Nix with 164 passing yards, zero passing touchdowns, but a clean slate when it comes to the turnover bracket of interceptions. And, of course, we got the ground game out of Bo Nix that was expected. Ten carries for the guy, 75 rushing yards, and a lot of passion on the sidelines. Um, so we kind of talked about the fact that Rattler got banged up when we first came into the postgame show. Uh, we talked about the fact that the Saints were able to find the end zone at the end of that fourth. But let's kind of talk about Bo Nix and this Broncos team picking up 33 points. Most importantly, anyone who had the combination of passing and rushing yards, we know a guy, Adam Kaufman, um, that hit. I mean, 75 combined with 164 is a great total for anybody who had faith and Bo Nix and the Broncos. So what would you take of the Broncos offense tonight? Uh, you know, it looked good. I don't want to say it looked great. Uh, you know, Bo Nix, again, he's, he's missing some easy receivers. He's seemingly making tough throws at times. He's missing easy throws at times. But, you know, good combination of moving the ball through the air. He got it done on the ground. And like you said, he, he flew over that rushing uh, plus pass number, which is sitting right around uh, 200, I believe, or, or thereabout. Uh, they moved the ball on the ground is what we expected. Uh, you know, not seeing Cortland Sutton involved in the passing game is a bit surprising, just considering he is their best player. Ultimately, like in terms of overall skill, like he should be their number one option. But they got it done. That's what that's what matters. I think Bo Nix will continue to improve. And like we spoke about him at the very, very beginning of the season, right? The, the game uh, against Seattle, we said like, you know, he looks OK. He's going to have his mistakes and like he's kind of slowly gotten better. So I think things are improving for him especially the defense can continue to play this well, this well and the running game. Like he's going to have these games where he doesn't need to have 300 yards and multiple touchdowns in order for the Broncos to be effective in win games. He needs to have an efficient 200 ish yards, maybe a passing touchdown, move the ball with his legs, give it to Javante Williams. And I think they'll be okay. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I think that he has the time seeing as how the trajectory that the Broncos are on right now to develop slowly into that, not force anything because part of the complimentary of his game is the ability to split up those air yards versus those ground yards. Now, yes, it was shocking to not see Sutton involved in the game plan as much or very much at all at that. Um, but let's touch on your guy pregame. On Pro Football Today, you said it. It's the Devontae Williams game for me. And you stuck to the script. You doubled down. You almost had the 100 yards that we could have shoved in Dave Sheriffin's Vegas Golden Knights face. But that's not exactly the case still. Uh, big winning night for Williams. 88 rushing yards, 14 carries, two tutties. And then through the air, 23 receiving yards, three receptions, which helped me out as well. So just kind of touch on uh, how that fulfilled your card tonight for the po pregame show. Yeah, I, I came into it, as I do with most, most games, with like a, a very centered game plan of like, this is what I think is going to be happening, like all in line. And, you know, I said that Javante Williams was leading the league with uh, in terms of total touches without having scored a touchdown. He led the team in, in touches inside the 20 and carries inside the five, and he hadn't scored the season. And now going up against this horrible Saints defense, run defense, that is, that allowed over 100 yards in three of the past four weeks, Notably last week with Sean Tucker, plus the 81 from Bucky Irving last week. We have multiple players, four players of 80-plus yards in four straight games for the Saints. And I said this was the game for him. Now, I don't want to sit here and say the 12-1 to number that we spoke about for <laughs> Javante Williams getting to 100-plus yards was a bit unlucky. He had the, the play call back to the holding penalty, which was about a 15-yard run. We saw McLaughlin break off a 20-yard run, and then Bo Nix had the 33-yard rush. And I'm not going to say the 20-yard the yard 21 yard run and the 33 yard run all those yards should have been going to Javante Williams but they just moved the ball those big chunk plays take away opportunities for Javante who was super super effective on the ground so all things considered this was a great game he went over on his carries which I said he went over on his yards and I also mentioned talking about the 100 plus number I said if you weren't comfortable with that go to the 60 or 70 number because his initial line was 44 and a half you would still get awesome plus money at 60 plus or 70 plus yards it was the Javante Williams game. I was right. I just wasn't right all the way. <laughs> you were close enough. Or at least I say that because I would have taken all of those take back in, into consideration. I mean, I think I asked you that once a couple weeks ago during halftime when you mentioned that a, a play got pulled back like 12 yards. And I was like, can I still have it? And you said no. So fair is fair. You didn't ask for it. Obviously, I would have been happy to give it to you. But regardless, you had the claim on Williams having a big game. And that was what helped with the 33 over 10 victory for the Denver Broncos. But more to unpack, most importantly, 
a look ahead. It's time to turn the page on this Thursday night football game and see what's going on on the Sunday slate. So don't go anywhere. Stick with us here on Pro Football Today. Post game show with Casey Hudson and Tom Vecchio. Make sure you're also following Sports Grid over on X. We chatted throughout the game. We got the game live or we got post game live on X right now. And we'll continue this show on the other side of this quick break. Pro football today on Sports Grid. Odds in motion. Trying to see what lines have moved throughout the week. Never felt more comfortable in the set than I do for this year. I am uh, ready. I'm just getting angry. The hot takes are going to be here all uh, long. People. What in the world is going on in Miami, Doc? It's not particularly anything to shy away from just because many people are on top of it. Hot takes, hot takes. I think this line is asking you once again to take the one. Pro football today, only on Sports Grid. If you're sliding DiVincenzo to the what? Uh, obviously, Terry Cheney Jr., that is actually dynamic uh, offensively and defensively. So we'll see how it works. I think it's a little bit of a work in progress. Do both teams win? Yes. I don't think at the end of the day, Minnesota could have afforded to keep Cat, Rudy, and Ant for that amount of money. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. Watching Pro Football today, the post game show with Casey Hudson and Tom Vecchio here on Sports Grid. We went over the Thursday night matchup between the Broncos and the Saints. Broncos coming out on top 33 to 10. And unfortunately, the Saints racked up a number of injuries to add to that long list that they already had heading into tonight's game. So rest is going to be the key for a lot of their players. But unfortunately, we're going to be looking at for an extensive injury report come Monday for the Saints. Moving past this Thursday night football matchup and the victory for the Broncos. It's time to look ahead and see what's in store for the Sunday slate. Now, a number of games that are worth a circle, and I think that this is one of them that I have to start with. It's going to be the Houston Texans versus the Green Bay Packers. Spread starting at that two and a half, and then the total sitting at 47 and a half. Tom and I started talking about these games on Monday night. Uh, maybe the main ones that we found exciting, but now there should be more to the lines, more to the props, more to everything else. So, Tom, let's dive back into this. What do we think of the Texans versus versus Packers matchup coming down the slate this Sunday. Yeah, obviously it's shaping up to be one of the games of the week. Like it, it's giving me reminds me of what we saw from commanders Ravens last week. Like this is what we should be seeing two great teams, two teams that are largely healthy for the most part. Obviously no Nico Collins for the Texans immediately jumping into some of the lines. Uh, the tank Dell line sitting at 62 and a half for the Texans just seems like a touch too high. And you know, personally, I'm, I'm invested in Tank Dell long term. Like, I think he's a, a phenomenal talent. Just the line's a little bit high. And that's what it comes down to when we still have Steph Diggs there. I think they're going to try and move the ball with Mixon efficiently on the ground. I just don't know how much we're going to get from Tank Dell. You know, considering we do have, we have a good defense on the Packers side of things. I'm not going to say it's amazing. It's not terrible. Like, it's a good defense. So, 62 and a half, I kind of lean on the under. If he starts off a little bit slow and we do see the Texans fall behind, 
and then we, we see a tank down number in the 40s, mid 40s, that's where I think we can take an over because they're going to be put into a passing game script. So I, I think it's business as usual for the Packers side of things. They have so many options. It's kind of tough to pick. Oh, it's going to be a big read week. Oh, it's going to be a big Dobbs week. They just have too many options sometimes. So nothing jumps off the page as of now. Yeah. But they're all think- good. They're all good. That's what it comes down to. Yeah, which is true, which is also why this makes it such a good matchup. And I like the comparison to the Commanders Ravens because you have that team that can try to claw back in because the talent is there. So uh, it's going to be interesting. Obviously, the spread speaks to how close this game can potentially be. But most importantly, probably where I would navigate is kind of some of the receptions and stuff because we know what the attempts are going to look like. We know uh, the key players that they might try to go to. But once Diggs shows his reliability and starts building chemistry with his quarterback, he kind of becomes that key guy, whether that's a few chunk plays or finding the end zone so a number of things to navigate with the Texans and the Packers coming up Sunday one o'clock as for another one circled I think that this is going to be a really good matchup between the Seahawks and the Falcons and I know it's a weird thing to say because Seahawks are pretty banged up Uh, defense is very questionable but most importantly it's just what this team has been able to do against some of the best teams in the nation in the second half of play their adjustments at halftime have just kind of made the game a little bit more interesting in the second half keeping that number a bit closer spread sitting at a solid three total sitting at 50 and a half so I don't know if that 50 and a half total speaks to the potential of the Falcons offense or the potential of these offenses kind of going toe to toe Uh, what do you think on this one Tom You know, we spoke about this game briefly on Monday, and the line was two and a half at that point. It did move to three. Um, You know, I kind of said, like, the Falcons are trending up. Like, that's the only direction that they're going right now. And we have the Seattle Seahawks coming off of three straight losses where they've looked bad. Right now, they looked, okay, they looked bad against the Lions. They looked great in the second half, as you said. They looked downright bad against the Giants. And then when they play the 49ers, yeah, they looked better in the second half of games. So, A high level of inconsistency for the first time this team got tested over the past three weeks. The line moved to three. I think the easiest spot to go is if we're buying into this trend. It's like, hey, they they kind of start slow, but we think they can be good. Maybe some people aren't sold on the Falcons. It would be Geno over 259 and a half passing yards because this would buy into, hey, they start slow, but they can come back and they can compete to, to keep the spread within reach and again it's a 50 over under so we are expecting points we are expecting the offenses to move the ball so i was i'm already on the falcons at, at two and a half as i said on monday i think that's a fine number i think gino playing the prop over is probably the best way to go I absolutely love that, and I couldn't agree with it more. I mean, regardless of what the result is for the Seahawks or their ability to get in the end zone, Geno's ability to air out the ball and try to get downfield um, has kind of spoken for itself. And some of these tougher games or some of these worst games for the Seahawks, uh, as so mentioned, have resulted in 300-plus passing yards for Geno Smith. So I definitely think that that's a worthy approach to this matchup. Again, spread sitting at three, total bumped up to 50 and a half now. Now, this is definitely the big take out the Sharpie, circle it over and over and over again. We got an NFC North showdown going down. Lions versus the Vikings, and what a test this will be. We've seen the Vikings rise to the occasion. We've seen their defense come to life. We've seen their ground game go to pound. We've seen a number of things. Spread sitting at one and a half total at 50 and a half. So once again, kind of speaking to the ability of these offenses getting on the board, but also kind of taking away from the ability of these defenses. So where do we go with this one, Tom? Uh, the line, if I if I remember correctly, I would have to double check. I, I think the line was two and a half or two. It's now one and a half in favor mm-hmm. of the Vikings. So a little bit of line movement in favor of the Lions, which is good to see. So I'm already on the Lions. Um, I think Jared Goff under 252, like I I think that's the play. I think they want to try and remove him from the passing game because we know the Vikings can throw a ton of different looks out there in terms of passing. And Brock Purdy really struggled. If we look back to week two or three, whenever they played, there was actually a a clip of Purdy talking to uh, the D.C. of the Vikings, uh, Brian Flores, and saying he has some great schemes out there. Like he was complimenting when they were shaking hands after the game. I think they want to remove Goff from the passing game a little bit. This would be a big Gibbs and Montgomery game on the ground. Of course, you're looking at Justin Jefferson on the other side, but I think it just wants to start with the Lions running game. I couldn't agree more. And plus, I got to ask you this, because I'm sure a lot of fans are going to probably be circulating this um, with the approach to this game. If the Lions lose this game to the Vikings, is this going to become a narrative of them losing Hutchinson for the season? Or is it just going to be tough competition? Minnesota Vikings have proven to be a formidable team this season. 
It's probably the latter, and it would also depend on how they lose, right? Like, right. If, if this game's a, a complete shootout, and it's like, well, they, they need more pressure. Like, there were times that, like, oh, he would have made the splash plays because they blitzing did, never got there, right? Like, Sam Darnold operated the whole game, completely clean pocket, and he was able to move the ball, pick apart the defense. Well, it's like, well, the Lions had no pressure on him. Maybe that becomes a thing, but it, it's probably circumstantial. And again, I think the Lions will make a move, and I think the answer is going to be Hassan Reddick from the Jets. Yeah, I yes, that's what we're all hoping for. Something has to shake out there because he's losing more money than he's making at this point, <laughs> at least in my personal opinion. Um, as for a team that's got to kind of get the script right, we've got to see four quarters in order for this team to continue to compete down the stretch here. And fans are getting frustrated, but we got the Eagles and the Giants. Um, We've got under two minutes, but again, we'll unpack anything that we don't get to after the other side of this break. But where are we at with this one? Three on the spread, 42 and a half on the total. Yeah, I kind of like the Giants, which is not something I can ever remember saying when (laughs) Daniel Jones is on that side. I really like the under. And yeah, this is a return for Saquon Barkley to take on his former team. So I have interest in going to Saquon Barkley, some type of props, which we can dig into on the other side. But the Eagles, like, they're not able to cover against, granted it was eight and a half points last week, but the Browns are terrible. We've spoken about how bad the Browns are time and time again. The only reason the Browns kept it close was because they had the blocked field goal return for a touchdown. And we have, we were not able to see the, the Eagles move the ball effectively on offense outside of the long touchdown to A.J. Brown. So I kind of like the Giants, and I kind of think the Giants are live on the money line. Oh, singings that Tom never heard, never thought he'd hear himself say that's always the (laughs) best take, honestly. But I can't go against you. I mean, honestly, if you think about the fact that the Browns have strung together what kind of football and not be able to kind of blow out in certain aspects or to fall short in certain aspects, it was just a weird thing to even watch. And I know fans are getting frustrated at not seeing a, a tranquility of a game pieced together by this team quite yet. But don't go anywhere. We continue to unpack this game and other games coming up on Sunday here on Pro Football Today. It's the post game show with Casey and Tom here on Sports Grid. We'll see you on the other side of this quick break. Pro football today on Sports Grid. Odds in motion. Trying to see what lines have moved throughout the week. Never felt more comfortable in the set than I do for this year. I am uh, ready. I'm just getting angry. The hot takes are going to be here all uh, long, people. What in the world is going on in Miami, Doc? It's not particularly anything to shy away from just because many people are on top of it. Hot take, hot take. I think this line is asking you once again to take the world. Pro football today, only on Sports Grid. If you're sliding DiVincenzo to the one, uh, obviously Terrence Cheney Jr., that is actually dynamic uh, offensively and defensively. So we'll see how it works. I think it's a little bit of a work in progress. Do both teams win? Yes. I don't think at the end of the day, Minnesota could have afforded to keep Cat, Rudy, and Ant for that amount of money. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid.
Welcome back into Pro Football Today, the postgame show with Casey Hudson and Tom Vecchio running through the Sunday slate. In case you missed it, Broncos get the win on Thursday night football, 33-10 to 10 versus the Saints. But circling back to Sunday, we're talking about a game that could likely go under. We don't know what to expect when it comes to the Eagles, but uh, we all hope that there's probably a little revenge in the eyes of one of their running backs going against former team, the New York Giants, total sitting at 42 and a half. And uh, Tom, you basically broke this down, but just double-checking if you had any final thoughts because we did cut to the break before we move on to the rest of the Sunday slate. Yeah, the the news that you know I wanted to touch on was that Malik Neighbors is apparently cleared from the concussion protocol. So there's no props up for the Giants as of now. He's missed a couple games. You know, we spoke heavily in the first few weeks of the season like he's awesome. It's always just looking at his reception totals, his reception yards. He's back, so it's it's a wait and see to see, you know, he's actually going to be cleared. And then once those props are at, I'm guessing it's going to be six and a half on his reception total, and then it's going to be in the 70s or so when it comes to his yards. I assume there will be plus money on the over when it comes to six and a half receptions. That's something I'm just naturally going to be interested in because they should be looking to get him the ball early and often, get him back in the flow of offense. So I kind of like some things on the Giants this week. Again, take that with a grain of salt. I do expect Saquon Barkley to be fully involved in this game. They want to get him the ball. They want him to score against this former team. Yeah, absolutely. And I w as we talked about it on here, I mean, Neighbors' ability not only in the records that he broke as a rookie, but just his ability to continue to show up and be a weapon versus top teams in the, in the NFL. Like, that just speaks to his athleticism. That speaks to his contribution to that Giants roster. So a lot of things leaning in favor of the Giants. And I get how tough that probably is to say. <laughs> now, uh, the guys were talking about this game during Game Time Decisions earlier today, Kevin Walsh, and then in Game Live. You got the Kansas City Chiefs versus the 49 her so we get that rematch uh spread sitting at one and a half here total sitting at 47 and a half and i'm hearing a lot of chatter that in this moment it's not a lock-in for fans to want to lean towards the chiefs so which way do you lean with this matchup because we've seen inconsistency from both teams we've seen a number of injuries kind of redirect some things when it comes to the chiefs but you can't go against the play caller that is the top player caller in the league but yet again niners kind of have a lot on their side so what do you gauge this one tom this is super, super tough. Like, I assume a lot of people out there will see this and they're going to say, you get the Chiefs at plus point where you're like, we're getting, that's not something we often get. So might as well just take the Chiefs, might as well do this, blah, blah, blah. And that's certainly fine. Like, if you just want to keep rolling with the Chiefs, I think that's okay. Mahomes interception prop, once it's posted, it might be my favorite prop once we see it. Because, you know, we have seen a, like a good, decent, a decent amount of inconsistency from Mahomes, which we've heard Kevin talk about at length on various shows where he's saying Mahomes isn't playing well. Mahomes is out there like at a one-to-one -one TD to interception ratio. So I kind of like going to the 49ers as of now, uh, but I also do like going to a Mahomes interception prop. As for the re like receiving props on both sides, I think it is completely all over the place. There's no level of consistency that we get from any of the Chiefs players. Like, we want to trust Kelsey, but he hasn't been getting there. You know, we want to say we, we trust Kareem Hunt, but I don't love the matchup going up against the defense. We want to go to some of the other pass catching options, whether it's a Debo rushing plus receiving. We want Brandon Ives to be involved. But, like, I have no trust from those players, especially if we're going to see um, – if we're going to see Ayuk lined up uh, against the top corner for the Chiefs. I spoke about him the other week. His name is escaping me. Uh, Trent McDuffie, uh, as he comes to mind. So it might be a Debo game, actually. So there's a lot going on in this game, as you can see. There is a lot going on. And honestly, even though you could probably narrow things down target-wise, for the 49ers just a little bit, we've also seen them kind of be a little up in air in terms of, like, who's going to be their go-to, who's going to be their lead. And so this is going to be uh, one of those things that, as Kevin and the guys were talking about, which defense do you trust more? And uh, they were saying that maybe they're not giving enough credit to the Chiefs defense, but for the most part in this matchup, they just feel like it's not one of those things that you can look at and be like, don't bet against the Chiefs. It's the Chiefs. Never bet against Patrick Mahomes. Never bet against Andy Reid. And I have to say I agree with that. I feel like this is a little bit more of a sticky situation than just saying don't go against the Chiefs. So once again, spread sitting at one and a half, total sitting at 47 and a half, and that's going down Sunday at 425 p.m. 
Eastern time. Now, another one that I've heard people have circled, but again, we're in the tri-state area. Uh, you got the Jets versus the Steelers. Steelers defense being who and what they are. Also, the run game out of Harris, but then most importantly, the Jets. I mean, some people still have hope. Other people are just kind of over it. People don't know what to do with Hall. Like, you saw a big game out of Hall after me personally being like, I don't know if I would really throw too much on that because we haven't seen him utilize as much, and then he has this breakout game. So, how do we gauge this one? One and a half on the spread, 38 and a half on the total. Super tough game for a couple reasons. One, Devontae Adams joins the Jets, and you got to think, okay, they traded for him for a reason. The, like, the deal is to get him the ball, right? Like, they brought him here to have that connection with Rodgers, get him the ball. Devontae Adams over on receptions, over on re receiving yards. That means it may not be a big Brees Hall game. It's a game where he actually may have a modest output, and we could see Braylon Allen continue to be involved. On the other side for the Steelers, Russell Wilson is going to be starting. It's going to be his first start of the year. He's been dealing with a calf injury since the beginning of August. I personally don't think Russell Wilson is good. But if the game plan is for him to be in there, we are dealing with a lot of unknowns because the Jets should be moving the ball on the ground with, uh, with Brees Hall. But now they want to add in Devontae Adams. So if they're going to be getting the ball to Devontae Adams, that means we actually should be seeing a lower target share for Garrett Wilson. It's not to say that Garrett Wilson is going to be completely cast out from the offense, but he's actually going to see a lower target share compared to where he was. So this game like has a giant question mark looming over it for both teams. I think I'm on board with the Jets, and I'm on board with Devontae making a big splash in his first game. Yeah, I don't think you bring a guy like that over for nothing, especially just knowing like the passion and some of the frustration that he's been experiencing in the past year or two career wise. You're coming into an Aaron Rodgers offense. So I can't imagine those two brains and those two passionate people um, just kind of feeling unfulfilled in their roles when it comes to this match. Mind you, with the big ground game anticipated versus the Bills, Rodgers still walked away with 294 passing yards, two right. touchdowns and Lazard having a 100 plus uh, game as well as Wilson having that 100 plus game. So knowing that you have those targets and those receivers and now throwing Adams into the mix. I don't know what that speaks to for the ground game when Hall came away with 113 rushing yards, but definitely a couple things to gauge cautiously when looking at this Jets-Steelers matchup, not to mention is that what the Steelers right. do on the game in terms of slowing down the uh, opposing team. So a couple more things to get into here on Pro Football Today. It's the post-game show with Casey and Tom here on Sports Grid. we got another quick break, so don't go anywhere. Join us on the other side. Pro football today on Sports Grid. Odds in motion. Trying to see what lines have moved throughout the week. Never felt more comfortable in the set than I do for this year. I'm uh, ready. I'm just getting angry. The hot takes are going to be here all uh, long. People. What in the world is going on in Miami, Doc? It's not particularly anything to shy away from just because many people are on top of it. Hot take, hot take. I think this line is asking you once again to take the words. Pro football today, only on Sports Grid. If you're sliding DiVincenzo to the one, uh, obviously Terrence Jennings Jr., that is actually dynamic uh, offensively and defensively. So we'll see how it works. I think it's a little bit of a work in progress. Do both teams win? Yes. I don't think at the end of the day, Minnesota could have afforded to keep Cat, Rudy, and Ant for that amount of money. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid.
One more rally here on Pro Football today, the post game show with Casey Hudson and Tom Vecchio. Now running through the Sunday slate as we close out Thursday night football, where the Broncos took home a W 33 to 10 and take home, well, getting it done on the road. Well, it says a lot for them and what they wanted to uh, be able to successfully contribute tonight. So outside of that, we started talking about the matchup between the Jets and the Steelers. Obviously, the new acquisition of Adams and how that's going to play out when it comes to connecting with Aaron Rodgers. We saw big air plays for Aaron Rodgers and Lazard. We saw plays with Wilson. So we're just trying to gauge where to go from there in terms of the targets as well as the numbers that will be produced through the air versus on the ground. Tom, we were cutting to the break at that time, so we'll touch on this really quickly before we move on. But I was talking about the fact that maybe the ground game takes slightly a backseat because if nothing else, this Steelers defense is going to be a lot more punishing on the ground than potentially through the air, or it could be both sides. I mean, what did you take of that? Well, I think it's important to note, like you, you were kind of touching at the end where like Lazard was over 100 and, and Garrett Wilson was over 100 and so was Brees Hall. Like that's not going to stay the same when you add Devontae Adams. We mentioned like you go out and trade for this player for a reason, right? You're on a three-game losing streak. You're kind of like, you need to solidify yourself in terms of the wild card race. So Wilson and Lazard and Devontae Adams, they're not all going to have 100-yard games because if that's the case, we should just be betting Aaron Rodgers over every single week. And that's just not how things work, right? So someone's going to have to take a step back. And it may be on a game-by-game basis, not like... What, what the, the point I'm making is like not all three receivers are going over 100. Like some games it's going to be Wilson and Adams. Some games it's going to be Adams and Lazard. So finding matchups on a week to week basis and fi- more importantly, finding the right lines to attack will be the most important thing. So when we have a team in flux that has a new element on offense, it's so, so important to bet the right lines like because they're going to be changing so much and the offense itself is changing. Absolutely. And we know that this is a team that has the capability of switching things up uh, depending on their game plan and their opponent. I will say this once. I mean, I'm not seeing the props on my end right now. The only thing I would lean towards in terms of Devontae Adams is, yes, it takes a minute to find chemistry between players. But you're talking about two guys that have a lot of experience in this league. They they didn't bring him in for no reason. And then on top of that, I feel like the Jets are going to want to make a statement. There were some parts of the game versus the Bills that left a bad taste in their mouth because the effort was there. Some of the big plays were there. There were a lot of things that were very much there. Um, So I feel like one of the best ways to make a statement is this guy, this passionate person that you bring into the mix here, uh, has some big plays. So maybe something to gauge in terms of his receptions, see where that synchronicity lies between him and Aaron Rodgers as they start to find their rhythm moving forward versus trying to go for any sort of target share or receiving yards for Adams getting into the mix there. Uh, Of course... We're going to touch a little bit on a Monday night football matchup, but you guys know where to get the best information. It's right back here on Sports Grid, right back here on Pro Football Today, but it's going to be the pregame show with me, Tom, Adam, and Dave. So Monday we got a double header. we got a lot to get into, but one of the games that we will just go ahead and start setting the foundation for, 8.15 p.m. Y'all know where I'm going. Baltimore Ravens versus the Tampa Bay Bucks. Three and a half spread, 49 and a half on the total. And uh, let's just say a lot of people have love for baker baking but where do you go with this one because we've seen the ravens start to kind of find and commit and buy into their game plan starting to rack up those w's for themselves and get their synchronicity going on their team but the bucks aren't too far off they're getting rid of some of that injuries that ridded their roster so how do we start looking at this one before monday night's pregame show initially i I lean on the under and you know again we want to take a step step back and look where these teams are ravens give up plenty of points to the commanders the week prior they give up plenty of points to the Bengals. for the buck side of things you know 27 plus points to the saints for a rookie quarterback week before that they have a ton of points to the atlanta falcons right like both these teams like they're moving things on offense very clear that those two teams are doing it but they're also kind of struggling a little bit on defense so i think they want to kind of reel this in get things under control. They don't want it to turn into a shootout. I think especially the Bucks want to keep Lamar and Derrick Henry under control. So I think under 49 and a half is my play. It may not be the most popular just because we have two awesome offenses and there's a ton of talent, but I think that's where the teams need to focus is on the defensive side of things because they have things kind of smoothing, like running smoothly on offense right now. They do, which means they're also going to be able to or maybe even want to manipulate the clock a little bit more. And whenever that goes into any sort of team's game plan, 
that doesn't particularly mean run heavy versus air heavy, but that means that when they're being mindful of the clock and trying to put it in advantage of themselves and when they have the ball, that does slow things down in terms of the scoring and stuff like that. So I think that these defenses can kind of feed off of each other and go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. So I'm actually kind of looking at the under a little bit myself. But as I mentioned, Tom and I, along with Adam Kaufman and Dave Sherapin, will unpack this one on Monday here on Pro Football Today. It'll be the pro game show, pro pre-game show then. Wow, it's getting late. But most importantly, it's a wrap for Tom Beck you and myself here. Thank you for joining us for the pregame, for the halftime, for the postgame. I hope everybody had a wonderful Thursday. And until we catch you guys next time on Pro Football Today, have a wonderful night.